I know a lot of people looking at me. I know a lot of people take direction and inspiration for what I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to inspire people to be bad people, to do dumb shit, you know what I'm saying, and put people in bad positions. If anything, just be a good dude. Just be solid. You ain't got to make a bunch of money. You ain't got to have the best cars or none of that shit. Just be a solid dude. That can get you very far in life. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk. And that's, that's unique in itself to think of even, to even do that. Like, you guys was real serious about the music early, early on. I, yes. I, I couldn't understand that. I'm like, why was I so caught up on hustling? They was thinking about music. I couldn't get, I couldn't figure it out, you know, for a while when I, when I would think about it as I got older. Mm -hmm. But y'all were focused, man, to be some young kids, man. Because 15, 16 now? Come on, man! I, don't even, I just told you I want to leave my boy at the house. Well, man, we we were trying to get out of that, trying to get out of that town. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. That was the thing, right? And if you wasn't an athlete, you know, you had to try to find another pathway because a lot of the people that made it from our town were like athletes. You yeah, know what I'm saying. So we had there was a blueprint for that, right? There was a pipeline for that. If you could play basketball real good, then this person could probably try to help you get to this university or something, and you can make it pro. Same thing with football. But outside of that, there wasn't really a lot of other opportunities. And rap was a new thing, so it wasn't real guaranteed you, wasn't gonna, you was gonna make some real money. I tell people all the time, wasn't nobody rich, wasn't no rich rappers back then. They had nice cars and clothes and jewelry and had some money, but wasn't no rappers rich back then. So yeah. why did you feel like you could make it? I just wanted to be a part of the culture. And I loved the music, I fell in love with the music. And once I started creating it, I saw it different, you know? Mm. And I wanted to see if I was as good as the people that I listened to and thought that I was good, you know, mm -hmm. with the hope they would think that I was good. So, you know, once I saw Chad was actually probably going to make a record out of all the people I've been around, I was like, Chad going to make a record. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to stick with Chad. And then once we actually made a record and got a record deal, then I was like, all right, this shit is real now. So we need to really start figuring out how to compete with these people because we made music that was good enough to get in the game, but we got to be able to be able to compete with it in mm -hmm. the game. Wow, I mean, you guys, like I said, it's it's crazy. You when y'all first, y'all didn't just sign the job. It was a record company before that that y'all signed to, right? UGK. Yeah, yeah, we were signed to Big Time Records. Big Time, how yeah. was that? That was good. Rest in peace to Russell Washington. He just passed away. Okay. Um, you know, we were all learning. Like we, nobody involved with the situation knew anything about the music industry. He had a record store, so he understood sales. You know how to get records. You know in the wholesalers and one stops and stuff like that. He understood that system. But as far as actually like re professionally recording the album and getting it mixed, getting it mastered, getting it pressed and all of that, none of us knew anything. Man. You know, we was looking inside of rap magazine, rap pages and stuff like that. They used to have ads where people would be like, well, we'll press up, you know, 600 CDs for $200 and stuff like that, you know, and cassette tapes and stuff like that. So. Um, it was it was rough. It, initially, the, all our first stuff was strictly cassette tapes. CDs were a very new thing That's right. in the industry, and it would cost a lot more. The cassette tapes were still a lot cheaper to do. So we found somebody that could make the cassette tapes. Then we had to find somebody who could print the, who could press the cassettes, right? The actual physical cassette tapes. Uh, my partner Steve Adams, uh, just a friend of mine who had the best camera I knew, came yeah, and took yeah. the pictures in Port Arthur. So we were just trying to figure this all out as we went along. We didn't know nothing about it. And just so happened that the music was jamming. It was jamming, man. Like, listen, man, that's the way I, that's the, that was my therapy, man. I ain't going to lie to you. You helped me a lot of days, man, on that on the road, what, whatever I was doing. Right. You, it was like, man, when I put this UGK in, man, I'm going to make it through. That's all I'm going to tell you. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. And I made it through, man. To be our age, to be my age, you know, and here still is a blessing because I've seen so many friends that passed away. And I think about you often because of all the people that you around you from three to all the people people that you've dealt with and and you still here man that's a blessing bro you know what i'm saying and and and, it, and then all the people you influence man um twisted black was just on the show and twisted black talked about you said don't call you call you you hit him up and said don't take nothing to keep it real did you ever think about doing anything with bun b yeah i got two songs with bun man and, and again I'm yeah because when i google bun, you yeah first thing pops up is him with you on a picture not yeah. together but yeah. because when you came out he commented yeah. on there and said you know man, bun has been super supportive you dope know, dude man man what are you talking I talked about to him very day, intelligent, very i love this dude minded, but more than anything 
you got a lot of these industry guys because I've met a lot of them. Mm -hmm. They just don't. They're really not familiar with the streets at all. Right. Okay? And then you got guys like Bun and his exact words. I was going to Starbucks. Give me a coffee. We Facetime. And he said it don't cost nothing to keep it real black. He said anything you I love do, it. I'm back in your play. No, you know what I mean. They don't. And and I thought that was live because for you to even do that, you know. And then we did some other stuff, but it just those links, man, mean so much to our people, bro. So I, thank you. I, I know a lot of people looking at me. I know a lot of people take direction and inspiration for what I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to inspire people to be bad people to do dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? And put people in bad positions. If anything, just be a good dude. Just be solid. You ain't got to make a bunch of money. You ain't got to have the best cars or none of this. Just be a solid dude. That can get you very far in life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Man, and, and another thing, thank you for Steve Below. But definitely, man, always been always looked up to those guys for what they brought to Texas, for for the South. Yeah. Uh, them guys are patriarchs, you know. I The way I found you is I, I heard this right here. Uh, like Swishes and Doge, and that was like, that was Pimp, and Pimp has a, had a protege. His name is Steve Below in Dallas. He don't really make music no more. Yeah, because that was you on Beehive, and when you said what you said, that drove me to go get him, mm -hmm. which in the end sent me to Bobo, got him on there. Bobo had told me about, you know, he hadn't really been speaking out because he had been going through some stuff, depression and all that, yeah. and I gave him some harsh words because I'm crazy. I'm going to say something a little throw like, what you think he'll think about that? Talking about pimp, you know, for you right. where you at right now, whatever. We was just talking, but Steve below the same thing, man. Just thank you for even mentioning his name, because when you mention his name, I call different people. He's everybody. Like, hey, man, I need Steve below on Boston. <laughs> Look, man, Steve below is is arguably one of the most talented people I've ever worked with and known, right? But this is a very rough game, and this game didn't go do right by him. A lot of yeah. in a lot of ways, the game just didn't do right by him, and so he. He didn't leave on good terms mm. with, the, with the industry. You know what I'm saying? He loved the culture, loved contributing to the culture, but the industry side was rough for him. Mm. And it just, it just was too much. And he had other options. You know what I'm saying? So he went and exercised those other options. And Steve is doing good for him. Doing real good. You know what I'm saying? But I do know, and he still makes music, too. Yeah, like yeah he, he does. still makes music. But when it comes to like actually wanting to record something, put something out and having to deal with all of that stuff, man, he just would rather not do it. And I don't blame him, man. You know what I'm saying? This is a dirty game. I've been done, you know, real. I'm still dealing with the repercussions of a bad you know, contracts and deals yeah. and stuff like that. So I can totally understand if you had another way to get some decent bread, mm -hmm. why would you put yourself through that? That's real, man. You know, Jive, you know, when I think about Jive and y'all label mates, like, too short. I know mm -hmm. y'all did some early on work. So that, I think it's, it's all right. That song, all right? Yeah, oh, yeah. man. What yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.